there. This is Chuck G. Violin and uh, corny entrance aside. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video than what I've been doing lately which is uh, going to be me talking again. I haven't done a talking to you guys video in a really long time and I know you've all been waiting you know bated breath for me to get up here and talk for 20 minutes. At that aside today's video is going to be a little bit different. What we're doing today is we're going to do a little video review of this bow, which is a bow, carbon fiber bow made by DZ Strad, and this violin, which is a loner violin, not my violin. Uh, my violin is in the shop. In um, January and February, every year, musicians kind of do something that they really enjoy doing, which is, you know, buying things. And the things that we buy are like we pay union dues, and we pay, uh, we buy strings, and we buy, get bows rehaired, and um, buy accessories and, and goodies like that with all the money that we made in December for, with all of our gigs. And uh, every January, you know, I do the same thing. I buy a lot of stuff, and uh, some Januaries are better, or, or not better, you know, some are, some are more expensive than others, and this is a big one this time. Uh, this time I'm finally getting the crack uh, on my violin fixed. There's a small crack right over the fingerboard here. And uh, so it's, it's a long repair and an expensive one. It's going to cost, you know, all thing, you know, all in, you know, with the bow rehair, with a, you know, a new bridge and the fix the crack and some other stuff. I mean, it's going to be just under two grand in about six weeks to fix all that stuff. So I've got this violin as a loader in the meantime. How do they fix a crack on the top of a violin, you ask? well, I'm assuming you asked, is what they do is they, uh, it's just, you know, it's, this is not for the squeamish. They take the, the, the whole top of the violin off. Okay, obviously they remove the fingerboard and they and get the fittings away, but they take the whole top of a violin off. Then they make a plaster cast of the inside of the top. Okay, um, those of you who aren't familiar with how a violin is made, the inside, the, this top of this violin is not uniform thickness all around okay it is actually you know it may be this many millimeters thick here there or wherever but then you know there's a blueprint when you make a violin there's a there's a blueprint based on you know years of experience for, and and based on you know analyzing the violins of the big of the masters like Stradivarius you know Guarneri and, and uh, you know Galliano people like that so um, they make a plaster cast of the inside those are called graduations by the way you graduate you know, by, you know, planing and sanding down this to a certain pattern or a certain thickness in different places. So my violin has very excellent graduations because it's an excellent violin. It's, it's really a special, uh, special violin. So what they're going to do is they're going to take the top off. They're going to make a plaster cast, which is basically taking a snapshot of the, the graduations and, and the thicknesses. Then, um, then they put a patch. They take, you know, or no, before they put the patch on, they file down the area over the crack down to like one millimeter thick, okay, and then they put a patch on it. They put a piece of wood, you know, it's probably, you know, I don't know how big it's going to be because I don't really know how big the crack is, but, you know, they put a piece of wood here, okay, and then they're going to uh, plane that down to match the graduations in the plaster cast. And when everything's all said and done and they glue the darn thing back together, I should have a violin that sounds pretty much like it did when I bought it 25 years ago. And if it's anything close to that, I'm going to, you know, that's, you know, $1,500, you know, well spent, personally, I thought. Uh, moving forward, I bought a new violin. I also bought a new bow to go with the new violin. And that's this one, uh, made by DZ Strad. They're out of White Plains, New York. And there are, there are several bow manufacturers, um, and especially when it comes to carbon fiber, which is what I, the way I wanted to go because carbon fiber bows for the dollar are generally better at a, at a lower price point than a Pernambuco bow. And, uh, and Pernambuco is going extinct anyway, so they're running out of the wood. Um, there is a finite amount of Pernambuco left in the world, hence the bows are more expensive. So, um, you know, plus Pernambuco, you know, one bow to the next could be a, a giant difference, even if they cost the same. This bow is going to be the same as another bow in the same series. This is the 550 model bow. Uh, not their most expensive, but, uh, you know, I think second or, or third from the top. You know, their bows start at, you know, under $100 and go on up over, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars So, um, 
So anyways, carbon fiber. There are other carbon fiber makers. Um, the big one is Codabo. I have a Codabo uh, that I use for viola. Um, I don't like it very much. It is not the, uh, not, it's just, it's too heavy and not weighted well. And it was very hard when I bought that bow um, to, it's very, it's very difficult to play, um, you know, to play any delicate stuff, which made it really tough when I had my first viola gig at, at a symphony anyways, and I was playing Midsummer Night's Dream by Mendelssohn. And those of you who know Mendelssohn or know the piece, know that that requires a lot of very, you know, A lot of very, very delicate playing. So uh, that was a tough gig, uh, and, it, and it was several performances, and, and I eventually did get it, so, you know, go me. Uh, but it took a lot of work. All right, so I wasn't going to buy another Coda bow because generally they are a much higher priced bow than, than others. Um, I had my eye on Char Products bow, the Presto. All right, and again, has several different levels, um, but again, higher priced than the DZ Strad bows. I mean, then you can go, you could buy junk from, you know, to, uh, from China or from overseas that is just, you know, awful. Uh, so, you know, you, I stay away from that stuff. Uh, Jean Paul also makes great bows. Okay, again, at a little higher price point. So, I decided to go ahead and take a chance on this. All right, and this is a, a, a was it wound up being an excellent purchase, under two hundred dollars, and uh, and and a very very nice bow. Okay, I'm going to play a little something here for you in a minute, which is also going to highlight this violin. Uh, as I may or may not have said already, made in Germany for the Voss Violin Shop specifically. Uh, Voss Violins are here in Atlanta, and uh, they are terrific. They're doing a, a beautiful job on my baby who's in the shop right now, and I'm um, picking up my good bow, which is with them right now. So uh, that's getting rehaired. I'm picking that up tomorrow. So anyways... Uh, you'll get to hear a little of the violin and the bow at the same time, so I wanted to at least get you introduced to those. Uh, so let's just start by playing something. Uh, let's just play some notes. So... concerto for you. Uh, I'm actually currently working on that concerto. I have never studied it. Uh, I've been playing the violin professionally for more than 25 years and uh, never studied the Brook concerto. I went straight from Mendelssohn. Usually Brook is like in between usually Mendelssohn and Brahms, you know, in terms of the big concertos that you learn. In between Mendelssohn and Binyavsky. Um, you know, the, the general progression of concertos goes, you know, Mozart, then, you know, uh, Mendelssohn, Brook, Vinyavsky, Brahms, etc., and on and on down the line. Brahms, Tchaikovsky, Sibelius, um, and then and then the ridiculous ones like Vuitton or you know Paganini and things like that. You know um, Prokofiev, so Barber. Anyways, uh, so I've never studied this piece, and uh, I am working on it now. It's 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 kind of fun to uh, study something that you've never worked on as a child. So. That being said, the violin sounds pretty good. The bow sounds pretty good. Now let's talk about uh, acrobatics. Okay, bows, I test bows on one piece of music only and for one purpose only, and that is can they play spigato. This bow can do that, obviously. Okay, this bow can play spiccato. It can play things like the one piece that I use for bow testing, and that is Mozart via Fritz Kreisler. So hey, that worked out pretty nicely. Okay, see, we don't we don't do things like edit these things. One take, Charlie is what they call me. So you don't like Mozart. Screwed up the end there a little bit. You know, so, you know, I mean, I'm not going to do several takes and, and, and edit stuff out. You know how that is. That's just, you know, stupid when you see guys doing that. So, um, you know, again, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, fancy stuff. 
Uh, and this bow does have a nice easy bounce point. I'm not working my rear end off like I have to with the Coda bow. Okay, what about, what about even finer bow like tricks? You know, the, the Ricochet, which is one of my favorites. Ricochet is used by a lot of uh, composers, you know, most notably, and you've probably heard this piece, one of my favorites. You know, the old Dance of the Goblins. You know, uh, we, we can do things like Paganini. Better for the harmonics. So, you know, I could do things like Paganini. It's not the, the most brilliant playing ever. But, uh, you know, we get, we get the idea. All right, so this bow handles pretty well. Okay, this bow is at 61 grams. 61 grams is, uh, you know, this is about normal for bows, 60, 61. Okay, uh, when you get above 62 into, you know, 63, 64 grams, that's a heavy bow. Okay, and when you get below 60, you know, that's a, a lighter bow. All right, my bow, personally, is uh, the one that's in the shop. Why am I looking over there? The shop's not over there. That My kitchen is over there. This is my house. Anyways, my bow is, uh, is, that is in the shop being rehaired right now uh, weighs in at 58 and a half, so it is a lighter bow. And lighter bows versus heavier bows, who should play them? Well, generally, people who play a little more aggressively are going to play a lighter bow. Okay, because they're going to grind and they're going to, uh, they're going to play, you know, play, oh, uh, like a man, they're going to play. Uh, no, seriously, um, actually, I, I play like that, okay. Uh, I play, tend to play uh, quite vehemently, uh, as I've been told. Actually, one of the ladies in my string quartet told me I play like a boy. So, um, uh, and, and that's true, I guess. I, I just, I play with a lot of passion and sometimes I get a little overzealous and I play a little too tough, but... Um, you know, such is life, I guess. Now, for others who tend to just, you know, really, you know, who don't put a lot of effort in making, you know, and, and, and don't feel like they want to uh, grind the strings to make sound, then they're going to play a heavier bow. Let, more, let the bow mo do more work for them. And quite honestly, um, everybody could benefit by letting their violin or their bow, letting, their, letting it do the, do the talking, so to speak, okay? And not not trying so hard okay so let's talk a little bit more about the violin all right and we're going to talk about the trying too hard stuff um actually before we do that we got one more thing we got to hit with the bow and that's bach okay um both bows and violins have to know how to play bach uh bach bach <laughs> smile a little bit smile. ah bach. Yeah, bach is not easy okay and it's and it's tough okay different violins you got to use different technique depending on the kind of violin you have all right because Bach has to sound you have to play it tough okay and you have to play it big because it's for solo violin but you can't have scratches it's Bach for crying out loud it's Baroque music it has to sound nice so you know <laughs> That's more the nice side of the Bach, not the best playing, but you get the picture. Now, you know, if you're going to play something, something big and heavy by Bach, it's... You know, get into the Chacon and really, you know, let loose. You know, that kind of thing. So, um... You know, bow has to be able to handle that. A violin has to be able to handle that. Okay, this violin, I'm going to tell you right now, we didn't talk too much about it, but this is a violin that costs $3,500, $3,500 American. Okay, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's worth every freaking penny of that. Okay, it is, it's a bargain at $3,500. It's bucks, worth okay. every penny. It's a really nice violin. Where it loses a little bit is, is in, the, in the lower... loses a little bit down there it's almost like playing a you know like an electric violin that's not plugged in uh, so you know but up here you know hey you know 
it sounds okay. You know, it, it, it does its does its work, so to speak. So, you know, it does it does what it does, and it's a nice violin. I really like it. I really like the bow, too. Okay, this bow is under $200. Um, it's more in the $150 range. So, you know, for $150, you could do worse. I can tell you that right now. So, uh, worth checking out. Again, I mean, I'm using this as a backup. Uh, I like it. I don't like it enough that I would use it for my, for my regular, everyday bow, but... Uh, as a as a backup that I'm going to use for you know wedding quartet work and uh, you know maybe some some smaller symphony stuff or you know just that I'm going to just use from time to time you know it's going to work out just great so um, again violin Voss violins uh, they make these in Germany Johann what is it Johann Wiesmüller with my beautiful German accent and uh, this is D Z Strat on the bow I'll put all this stuff in the uh, you know, in the in the, the little description section, so you can uh, check it out online. And uh, hopefully, you guys have a terrific, terrific rest of your week. Actually, it's Friday, so the rest of your week's about four hours, and then you're into the weekend. Yeah. So, so hey, uh, take it easy, everyone. Have yourselves a great weekend. Um, play the best you can. Play with a lot of passion. And uh, we'll see you next time. Violin guy.